Continuing on with our lessons in algebra, we're going to be looking at a new type of factorization, which, like last lesson, results in a double set of brackets. So this is going to be called factorizing algebraic expressions using DOPS, and DOPS stands for difference of perfect squares. Now, difference means subtraction, and perfect squares we're going to be exploring here. So if we think of squared numbers, that means um, another number squared gives us one of these numbers. So for 1, 1 times 1, or 1 squared gives us 1. For 4, 2 times 2, or 2 squared gives us 4. 3 squared gives us 9. And we can continue on. So with this last one here, 13 squared gives us 169. And x times x gives us x squared. So this is the perfect square part of DOPS. We're going to have the difference of two perfect squares. And that looks a bit like the rule down here. Here I've got a squared. That's a perfect square because a times a gives us a squared. b squared is another perfect square. b times b gives us b squared. And we've got the difference between them. Now to factorise this, that means putting brackets back in, we're going to have another case where we've got a double set of brackets. Because a times a gave us a squared, and a is going to go at the start of each set of brackets, and b squared is afterwards, b times b gave us b squared, so here's a b and here's a b in the second half of both brackets. There's going to be a plus and a minus in the, each of the brackets respectively. Now, in order to know whether we've factorised something correctly, you can always check by expanding something out and making sure you get what you started with. So I'm going to show you why this works, but keep in mind when we ask you to factorise something with DOPS, this here is your final answer. So over here, I'm just going to show you how it works. In order to expand this, we need to FOIL like we have in previous lessons. So if we do first, that's A times A, so that's A squared. Remember, this is just a check over here. Outside, a times minus b is minus ab, write it alphabetically. Inside, b times a, that's going to be plus ab. And b times minus b, minus b squared. Here we have minus ab plus ab, which equals 0. So what are we left with? What we started with, a squared minus b squared. So you won't be required to do this. All the question is going to ask you is to put it in brackets here. So you're going to be seeing if you have the difference of perfect squares, this is how it can be factorised. Now it's really important to look for a highest common factor first if it's in the question. And we're going to do some examples and you'll see that in questions E and F this part becomes really important. So we're just going to look out for that for the first few examples. Um, we're going to find we don't have one, but it's important to check that first. So with example 1 here, we've got x squared minus 9. Now, does this look like two things squared? Well, it might not at the moment, but this one definitely looks squared. x squared we know is x times x. So we need to think 9, is that something squared? Well, yeah, we saw before, that's 3 times 3. So in order to factorise this, to put it back into brackets, we're going to put a double set of brackets in. Now, x is going to go at the start, because we said x squared is x times x, and a 3 is going to go at the end of each bracket. Then all we need to do now, look up here, we had a plus and a minus. We just need a plus and a minus. And that's it. You've factorised it. All you need to do is check whether these are square terms and there's a difference. Then it's going to be factorised like this. OK, at that time, I forgot to check whether we had a highest common factor here x squared and 9, no, they don't have a factor in common. So let's check it for b. x squared, 100. There's no common factor we can take out there. So we're going to start looking at what squared gives us x. x squared, sorry, that's going to be x. What squared gives us 100? That's going to be 10 times 10. So remember, these are the things that are going to be going in our double set of brackets here. We need an x at the start of both brackets. So I imagine that went at the start of the first one, that went at the start of the second one. And we need a 10 at the end of both brackets. And we need a plus and a minus. Simple. OK, we've got another one now. 25 minus x squared, so that's 5 and 5. And x times x gives us x squared. 
So this one's a little bit different because we had the number at the start and the variable at the end, but it really can be anything provided it's a square term. Now just to double check, silly me, I forgot to check if there was a highest common factor, 25 and x squared, no there's not, so conveniently that's alright then. Okay, so we should be getting kind of used to the pattern of this now. The 5 is going to be going at the front of each set of our double brackets and the x is going to be going at the end. We need a plus in one bracket and a minus in the other. So let's do that all together, 5 plus x, 5 minus x. Not too bad. Okay, for part D, we've got 4x squared minus 49. Okay, the 49 we're kind of familiar with, 7 times 7 is 49, but what squared is going to give us 4x squared? Well, we've got to think of all the components here. I know that 2 squared will give me 4, and x times x gives me x squared. So if we put it all together, 2x and 2x multiplied together will give us 4x squared. So if you can't visualise that, just think 2x times 2x. We have to sign number letter it, remember SNL, Saturday Night Live. 2 times 2 gives us 4, x times x gives us x squared. Okay, so I think I've convinced us. So we need to put in our double brackets. We need 2x is going to be at the start of each bracket and 7 is going to be at the end of each bracket. So 2x plus 7, 2x minus 7. Okay, so we didn't have a common factor there either. There wasn't a number or a letter that we could take out. That is not true for this one over here. If I look at 50y squared minus 18, I notice that they're both even numbers. And when we look very carefully, 2 is the highest common factor that we can take out. So let's put a 2 out the front here, and let's put a big square bracket, and we're going to deal with all of the dops kind of stuff inside of the bracket a little later on. So we have 50y squared. Well, if we take out 2 as a common factor, that becomes 25y squared. And that's pretty good because 25 is a square number and y squared, that's also something squared, y times y. Taking out 2, dividing that, we're going to have minus 9. So just think, 50y squared divided by 2 gave us 25y squared. Or you could imagine, something times 2 gave us 50y squared, so that has to be 25y squared. And then something times 2 had to give us minus 18. So that had to be minus 9. Okay, so now we can get into our DOPS business. A bit like 4x squared over here, this is going to be, well, something times something needs to give us 25y squared. So that's going to be 5y. 5y times 5y will give us 25y squared. And with 9, it's going to be 3. Ooh, what happened with my pen there? It's going to be 3 and 3. So let's keep that big square bracket around until we don't need it anymore. And we're going to put our DOP stuff inside. So it's like we're zooming in on just the stuff inside of here for the moment. So we need a 5y and a 3 in each bracket, one with a plus, one with a minus. 5y plus 3, 5y minus 3. Okay, so two times everything in this bracket if I have 2 times this and these two are multiplied by each other, I don't really need that square bracket anymore. It's done its job by making sure everything is multiplied with each other. So it can go. Okay, so we're looking at example F now. Is there a common factor that we can take out here? There most certainly is. 32 and 8 have a common factor of, well, 8. So I'm just going to move slightly over here. Let's take 8 out as a common factor. We'll put a big square bracket to keep all of our DOP stuff inside. So 32 divided by 8, that gives us 4. That's good. That's a square number. And if we take out of this one, minus x squared. Okay, so DOPS is happening inside of this square bracket. So 4 is 2, and here we've got x. So let's keep that 8 out the front. We need 2 and x with a plus in one bracket and a minus in the other. 
OK, that square bracket has finished keeping the DOP stuff inside. And we just want to say 8 times this. And because everything's multiplied with each other inside of this bracket, we don't need that square bracket anymore. So 8, 2 plus x, 2 minus x. It's important we use the square bracket up here, because remember, if we didn't do a bracket, we just said 8 times. It would just mean 8 times 4. And the minus x squared would be left out. So I like to imagine the square bracket sort of keeps everything involved in dobs inside, not falling out. And by the time we've organised it all into brackets and we have everything times each other, we don't need that square bracket anymore. OK, please continue on with the questions relating to this. I can't remember which ones they are, but I'll write it down in a second. OK, here they are. It's exercise 8D, factorising dobs. Good luck.